Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to a uh, fireside session uh, with uh, Hide, Hide Taka from uh, Global Brain and also uh, Estelle from uh, Promise Ventures. So, uh, uh, actually, so uh, I'm Masa Ishida, uh, president of the CEO of Space Tide Foundation. So, I'll be the moderator for uh, this session. So, actually, so this week uh, in Tokyo is uh, Space Week. So, we, Space Tide Foundation, hosted uh, our own commercial space conference. Uh, from Monday to Wednesday, and some of you may attend it, uh, our conference. And yesterday and today, uh, Secure World Foundation is hosting the Summit for Space Sustainability. So I'm personally very honored to be part of this excellent event today. So uh, in this session, uh, we'd like to uh, discuss, uh, uh, we have two venture capitals uh, from Europe and Japan uh, investing in a variety of space startups so far. So in this session, we'd like to uh, discuss our uh, investors' viewpoint on how our responsibility and our uh, sustainability impact on um, uh, venture capital uh, investment decision-making process. That's a topic we'd like to discuss during the session. And uh, as my opening our questions, uh, I would ask uh, each of you to introduce your fund interest and also our, our investment portfolios uh, in the space industry. Uh, that can help uh, audience understand as a background to your comment during the session. So the Esther, uh, please begin. Hi, everyone. Very nice to meet you. And thank you so much uh, for the Secure World Foundation for inviting me today. Um, I'm working for Promise Ventures. So we are an early stage uh, venture capital firm. We've been around for about 12 years. Uh, we started in the US. Uh, our managing partner, Mike Collette, uh, raised and deployed four funds that were based in the US. And then we made our way uh, to Europe and launched our first uh, investment fund in Europe uh, based in Luxembourg, uh, which was a 120 million fund um, that we launched in 2020. Um, and we've done 16 investments with this fund to invest in companies that are early stage, so from seed to series A, sometimes series B, um, with ticket size of one to four, five million. Uh, we invest across the whole stack of the space supply chain, uh, from uh, the upstream to downstream side, but also doing technology transfer. Um, so some of our portfolio companies include uh, Rocket Lab, Spire, uh, ISI, uh, the exploration company, uh, we've done also uh, more downstream companies like Mapbox, uh, Swift Navigation, uh, which is a, a common portfolio company, uh, to name a few. And uh, in terms of the team, so we're uh, split between Europe and the US. Uh, we are five in the investment team, uh, and we're uh, looking to uh, continue the deployment of our space tech uh, fund, which is also a deep tech fund. Uh, so we invest also in, uh, in robotics, uh, AI and, uh, and health, for instance. Mm, yeah. So in total, how many uh, space companies have you invested in so far? Um, more than uh, more than 20, 30 com space companies, if you take the whole uh, supply chain mm -hmm. from ac across the, all the funds that we have. The, the fund that we are deploying now, which is the, the fund based in Europe, is a space fund. So all the 16 companies in which we've invested uh, in this fund are space companies. Uh, they, they range across the whole uh, supply chain, um, and they, they are all space companies. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank the you. quick introduction. So, Hide, please. Yes, uh, thank you. And my name is Hide Aoki. Uh, probably most of uh, people here know me from, uh, you know, co-founders of Space Tide and Space Port Japan. But today I'll be speaking on behalf of uh, Global Brain. I'm a partner at Global Brain also, which is uh, Japan's, uh, one, of, one of Japan's largest venture capital, having uh, about two billion uh, US dollars asset under management, investing worldwide. We have a nine, actually 11 offices in nine different countries, having uh, 150 venture capitalists actively investing worldwide. And we have uh, uh, more than 400 portfolio companies uh, around the world, of which uh, about 10-ish uh, space startups, 40 uh, robotic startups. They are uh, uh, something that I have invested. And uh, our fund are invested by Japanese uh, government and uh, uh, some of the sponsors of this conference, including uh, uh, Mitsubishi Electric, KDDI, ANA, which is Japan's largest uh, airlines, uh, 
Mitsubishi Mitomo Insurance, all those big names who are actively working on the space industry have invested into our funds. And uh, um, what else I can say? Our portfolio companies. Mm -hmm. So we have invested into um, uh, Axel Space, uh, Pale Blue, Gitai, um, Digantara in India, and of course we uh, have a same uh, common uh, portfolio, Swift, Swift Navigations, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, still actively investing uh, worldwide. Okay, thank you very much for the quick, quick introduction. So let me move on to the free discussion portion of the panel. So the, if you, you have any question to both speakers, please post your question on, or I think this is a Hoover app application, right? Yeah, I will take the, your questions. So the, uh, so uh, Estel, so we have seen the rapid expansion of a global space economy uh, over the past decade. But uh, at the same time, we are facing uh, various challenges. So I, I believe the space sustainability has become one of the top challenges we are facing now. So the, to what degree is, uh, space sustainability challenges are important for your uh, investment decision-making process? Uh, is it uh, uh, knockout factors or important factors or uh, complementary factors? What do you think? Yeah, thank you for the question. So um, the way that we see things, uh, I would uh, uh, segment them in, uh, in several points. Um, the first one is that uh, we're uh, regulated to one of our limited partners and investor in the fund uh, is the European Investment Fund, uh, which is the main financial institution in Europe uh, that invests in uh, most of the, the VC funds across Europe, but also uh, outside of Europe. And they have uh, guidelines and definitions around sustainability, uh, but also uh, around uh, ESG uh, components, which we have to comply to. Um, and we do it uh, by doing some, uh, some reporting and some due diligence uh, specific for that. Uh, when we look into a company, we are going to ask specific questions mm -hmm. uh, that are going to be in line uh, with the guidelines that are provided by the European Investment Fund, but that end up also being in uh, our favor because we, when we do the due diligence process, we want to make sure that the teams in which we invest and the companies in which we invest uh, will stay in the long term and will provide uh, sustainable returns for our investors. Um, and looking at the, the aspects that are linked to sustainability, such as sustainable supply chain, um, elements that are going towards uh, the climate change, uh, but also uh, ethical teams uh, and making sure that uh, it is socially uh, acceptable, uh, will make sure that the company uh, be uh, successful in the long term mm -hmm. and we see real, uh, real um, successes from that. So that's, uh, that's one point uh, where we'd say we get the guideline from the limited partners directly. Um, we have our own guidelines uh, which go in line with all of these guidelines because uh, we see benefits in asking, of, asking those questions and making sure that the teams in which we invest um, have, uh, are compliant with all of these aspects. And on the other hand, uh, the companies in which we invest, uh, so most of them, uh, well, all of them in this case, uh, are space companies, and they all uh, are almost dependent on contracts from uh, the European Space Agency or other institutions, uh, for the majority of them. Uh, and they get also um, regulations and compliance on that side, uh, because the European Space Agency is going to set up guidelines um, such as the zero debris policy, which uh, you may have discussed already, um, and uh, other sustainability uh, requirements. Uh, the, the ESA has put in place a whole corporate social responsibility uh, policy at place, uh, which also is going to apply to uh, the companies with which they are going to do business. So as the main actor, they're going to define some guidelines, which are then go going to be uh, 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 falling down uh, to the rest of the supply chain and the consortium with which they are going to, uh, to partner. So companies in which we invest have those two requirements. We ask questions during the due diligence and we make sure uh, that the companies are going to take a, a good direction. We, we advise them uh, for their own sake and for our own sake. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also get uh, the, the, the guidelines from the public agencies. Mm. So, as you mentioned, uh, especially in Europe, so ESG works as a guideline for investment decision. But uh, I feel the ESG has not been widely discussed, especially in the space industry, right? So, the, uh, 
but the promise ventures are promise ventures have our as I say the government uh, investors. So do they are do these investors require ESG consideration when investing in the space company or or are there any specific guideline uh, required from the investors for this? Yeah, so they don't have so the, the the limited partners that have invested in our fund not do, do not necessarily have specific guidelines uh, for space companies. They have general guidelines that apply to all of the companies in which uh, we invest in, um, and that applies to the other funds in which they invest. They don't invest only in space funds, but they also invest in uh, uh, in funds in software or health tech or uh, generalist funds, uh, and they have those general guidelines for everyone. Uh, that being said, um, I agree uh, with your question and I agree with you that uh, guidelines should be adapted also uh, to the sector of uh, choice uh, and having specific guidelines for the space sector um, may prove beneficial because you, you would consider uh, elements that are specific to space uh, and that cannot be necessarily implemented um, at the generalist level uh, and that may help uh, companies to follow uh, guidelines, evolve in the long term in the right direction without putting too much burden on them uh, for them to be uh, successful in their business. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much. So let me talk with uh, Hide. So the term space sustainability, so I would say, has no consensus definition. It can be taken a wide range of meanings so given a different uh, national or industry context. So the, when uh, conducting the business due diligence process on a uh, potential investment company, so what specific factors or element uh, do you check? And uh, what kind of companies uh, do you highly evaluate? Thank you. Thank you for the questions. So, uh, first of all, I strongly uh, believe that uh, space sustainability is a business chance, which means that uh, for investors like us, it's uh, investment opportunities. So, uh, you know, uh, as you look at uh, um, many space startups trying to uh, tackle these issues and uh, very much successful, including, uh, you know, companies like uh, AstroScale, QPS, uh, iSpace, all those uh, startups are making a progress and making profit, which means that uh, you know, it's uh, investment opportunities for us. But at the same time, there are many risks you know, for uh, this domain, including debris issues, because uh, you know, we have to worry about our portfolio companies' uh, constellations uh, getting hit by someone's debris, and uh, we lose all our investment amount. You know, and uh, we have to worry about that as well. And also uh, national security threats uh, that we are facing at this moment, that is a huge risk for us. However, um, as long as you understand the risks, um, that's been taken care of. Because our investment you know, decision-making process, we make decisions based on the understandings of the risks. So if we can take care of the risks, uh, you know, we can expect what to come. So the failure percentage of the uh, uh, rocket or the you know, percentage of the uh, uh, debris uh, you know, getting hit or something like that, we, we do also evaluate. And uh, as long as we know the risks, and the more we take risks, we understand that uh, the more returns we get as an investor. So uh, we, we take that risks as well mm -hmm. as an investor. So the long-term sustainability and our short-term profitability uh, can sometimes uh, conflict. So, so, yeah, I mean, for example, okay, so paying, ex paying extra costs for, okay, so post-mission disposal service or uh, incentive, uh, insurance for uh, sustainability may reduce the uh, profit, right? So as an investor, uh, how do you manage our uh, investment, investment companies uh, to control this conflicting? Yeah. Um, I can share. So we're a general fund, uh, you know, uh, partially invested by government, but uh, mainly invested by private companies. So we have to give the returns, quite high returns. We're except, except, you know, expected to make returns. So uh, we just look at the uh, uh, investment portfolio as, uh, uh, you know, uh, purely business cases. Uh, so which, which is the uh, uh, baseline. However, as a deep tech investor, 
we look uh, quite a little bit differently from the uh, traditional venture cap capitals who have been investing into software-based uh, startups. As a uh, you know, deep tech uh, venture capital, we have to have uh, uh, long-term perspectives rather than uh, uh, short-term perspectives. So uh, it, you know, startups will not be successful within a matter of a few years to go to IPO. If you look at the you know, successful big names like a SpaceX, they have been spending 25 years to become such a big com uh, company. So we are you know, more you know, generous about waiting 10 years or less. Sometimes could go over 10 years. So uh, you know, uh, short, if, if we look at short-term profit, we, we, we may you know, get the uh, worst case scenario. So mm -hmm. uh, long-term pers perspective is the uh, key. And that's, that's something that we as a, uh, you know, deep tech investors to educate other investors trying to come into uh, space sectors because not so many investors are familiar with the, uh, you know, the terms, market, and the risks of this uh, uh, market. But we have to have more and more investors because we are having more and more startups. That, you know, that sense we have, we are, you know, continuing uh, educating uh, those, uh, you know, new investors as well. But, mm. uh, uh, you know, in return, we get a huge uh, return. Uh, I know that, that, that we, we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Esther, so do you have any comment on the same, same question? So how to balance between the short-term profit and long-term sustainability from the investor point of view? No, I, I mean, I think I fully agree with what, uh, what has been said. Um, there is obviously a long-term case for us to be made, and especially, I mean, uh, as, as promised, we invest early stage, so we are, we are really here for the, for the long run, um, and we need to make sure that the companies in which we invest are going to stay uh, for a couple of years um, after we invest, and that they are going to be invested uh, in turns during the next rounds by follow-on investors that may not be as educated as we are on the space sector. Um, it's starting to change. We see slowly a change in mentality from later stage investors that are trying to get into deep tech, get into space. But still very early, there is still a very small pool of investors that are looking at that. And those investors often have uh, even more stringent um, regulations than we do. Uh, because they need to look at a certain number of factors and um, regulatory compliance for their own LPs, um, which are also in line with a sustainability aspect. So we need to prepare the companies for themselves uh, to make sure that they are going to continue receiving support from the government, especially in space, as this is uh, still much of a driven uh, sector by the, the public government. Um, but at the same time, we need to also prepare them so that they are going to be ready for the next round of investments um, and they are going to be ready uh, to be in line with the requirements that those later stage investors are going to ask for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Hide, one more question. So as you mentioned, the space sensitivity itself is now becoming a uh, significant market we can invest. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, always, uh, our, uh, we always view the space sustainability as a guideline or restriction, something like that, but the space sustainability generates a new market. So here in Japan, as to scale, uh, market radar in satellite servicing and long-term sustainability uh, gone public uh, last month, so it generated a lot of attention. So uh, from your viewpoint, so are there any or technologies or services uh, relating to space sustainability uh, you are particularly interested in now? Yeah, recently I have, uh, we have invested into uh, Digantara in India, which is working on uh, uh, space sustainability, you know, activities and uh, uh, they're providing uh, solutions for uh, SSA, uh, for ver uh, different kinds of uh, uh, governments uh, in the world, including uh, uh, private industries. And, uh, um, you know, uh, that kind of uh, uh, activity is very important uh, and uh, we made a decision of investing. And uh, another one that uh, we recently invested was the uh, um, Pell Blue, based in Tokyo, or mm -hmm. the neighborhood of Tokyo. They're developing a water-based uh, uh, micro-proportion for uh, satellites. And uh, uh, when we made it, actually, we uh, within two years, we made two investment into Pell Blue. And uh, uh, the first sentence of our uh, executive summary of investment committee says that the Pell Blue is creating and developing uh, environmental friendly product, which we must invest. Mm -hmm. And we got the, instantly, we got a con 
consent and support from uh, all the uh, uh, you know general partners of the funds. Mm. And uh, we all know that uh, you know supporting that kind of startups uh, will give us a benefit as well as the uh, a huge benefit for the societies and the market. Mm. Yeah. So Esther, from a European perspective, so are there any technology or services relating to space activity are you interested in? Yeah, I think I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm in line with uh, again with what has been said. Um, there's different steps uh, and different blocks uh, that we can look at when we think about sustainability of space. There's obviously uh, the SSA and kind of uh, sustainability of what's in orbit already. Uh, so making sure that there's not going to be debris, that we're going to be able to remove them, um, and that we're going to be able to find ways uh, such that satellites that we launch in the future uh, are going to be able to uh, deorbit themselves or um, find a way to uh, to make anti-collusion measures. Uh, but there's another, there's a whole lot of other stacks um, that we also need to consider um, that are more linked to the materials that we use. Um, a propulsion system is one, and actually uh, one of our portfolio companies, so the exploration company, they're con considering um, uh, green propellant for their uh, for their uh, missions. Um, we are also looking at companies that are doing recycling of material, so recycling of uh, Kevlar and uh, carbon fiber, uh, which mm -hmm. are also elements that are widely used in the space sector and in the aerospace sector uh, in general. Uh, and we are also looking at uh, sustainable ways to track and use space data for uh, benefits on Earth um, and for uh, meteorological perspectives. So we invested in, uh, in Jua uh, that is uh, doing weather models uh, for uh, energy utilities. Uh, we are looking at alternative source of energy also uh, for terrestrial domain, like uh, wireless power beaming uh, that would be able to, uh, to provide energy on Earth uh, that in a sustainable manner. So beyond the obvious uh, kind of perspective on space sustainability, um, there is uh, just a, a whole world of possibilities and solutions that we can uh, look at uh, in order to contribute to a more sustainable world on Earth and also in space. And that's um, the way that we see things, uh, is we really want to address all of these aspects and make sure that the investments that we make uh, are going to contribute to the sustainability of, uh, of uh, space and Earth at the same time. Okay, so so far, so we have discussed the uh, uh, impact of space sustainability on um, our investment process. However, uh, beyond making investment, it's also important for our, our investor to ensure or incentivize uh, responsible uh, uh, space operational behavior of the investment companies. Mm -hmm. So Hide, so I think that you have been supporting your investment company from. Uh, uh, seed stage to pre-IPO stage. So what kind of uh, actions uh, should be taken to ensure the responsible behavior of investment company? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I actually involved from a company building until IPO, even after IPO. So it's, uh, you know, as I said, uh, you have to have a long-term perspe perspective of supporting uh, s startups. And, uh, you know, during that, you know, period, could be five years, could be 10 years, could be 12 years of that time, you have to keep supporting startups, right? So um, getting funded continuously is very important for startups uh, because uh, you know when startup fails, that's when you run out of cash and the entrepreneur gave up on its business. That's when you die. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep funding. But uh, as long as company has been working very well in terms of a business development, at the same time making good progress to comply with the ESGs and uh, uh, get, uh, you know, uh, working on the sustainability activities, we uh, highly uh, evaluate that progress and make additional investment, which means that they are one step closer to uh, you know, either exit, IPO, or M&As, because the uh, m and processes requires you to be a sustainable company and comply with the ESG policies and things like that. So that's a uh, you know, requirement will be a requirement eventually. So we work closely with the startups on that kind of uh, you know, company building. OK, thanks for your comment. So uh, we are running out, of, running out of time, right? But uh, I, I have received so many questions to both of you. So I'd like to pick uh, one or two questions. So the question is, uh, what is the ratio of investment space business centered around solving space debris, please? 
other space companies, uh, would it be smart to have a guideline on that ratio, or if not, then why? You, can, yeah. can you take the question? So guidelines on the, um, on the sustainability measures? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, I think I agree with this approach. Um, and there is a lot of efforts that are done uh, at the space agency level. I know that the, the Luxembourg Space Agency, with which we collaborate a lot, uh, is doing a lot on the, on the subject. They're doing also uh, that in collaboration with other actors, like the European Space Agency and the other space agencies in Europe. Um, and themselves are also working uh, together with uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, the initiative that has been put in place. Those are guidelines that support companies to get an understanding of what is expected of them, and they, it helps them to identify areas that they have to, uh, to follow early on in their development process. So I agree that those guidelines uh, are uh, useful and they should be continued. Um, at the same time, I think it's very important that all of the actors are around the table to talk about those initiatives and those uh, guidelines to make sure that everyone follows the same and that we do not reinvent the wheel um, each time at different levels. Okay, thanks for your comments. So yeah. I, I'd like to take one more question. I think uh, it's uh, for Hide. So what, what is the ROI uh, you are targeting to make an investment into a, a space startup company? And did you have to adjust this target ROI since when compliance with space sustainability has become a requirement? So average expected ROI for venture capital is around 15% uh, for in general. And in space, I think it's higher than that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, uh, even considering uh, space sustainability, I think uh, uh, our returns are higher than uh, other, uh, you know, sectors. So uh, we don't think we need to worry about too much mm -hmm. our, you know, our eyes or IRR. Okay, thanks for your comment. Yeah, uh, we are running out of time. So thank you, Hide and our Estelle for facilitating discussion. Uh, 25 minutes is too short, right? <laughs> <laughs> Discuss a variety of topics. But we've highlighted, uh, yeah, uh, investors uh, should consider the importance of space sustainability uh, when investing in their uh, space company. And also the investor can ensure or incentivize the responsible behavior of the invested company. In addition, as uh, Hide mentioned, uh, space sustainability itself is becoming our uh, business opportunity so we can invest. Yeah, that's uh, my takeaway. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.